Hello everybody, it's Brian, and in this video I wanted to give you all a tour of my Galaxy Z Fold 2. For my personal phones, I occasionally do this every so often, mainly for personal reference, so in case I need to reset Android from scratch, I can just pull this video up and be able to put everything back to where they were. I'll be taking a look at the accessories as well as the software, so let's start with the accessories first. Not really a whole lot to cover there, I'm just using the Samsung leather back cover. Uh, it only covers the back, nothing here on the front, unfortunately. This was only $5 after the $50 pre-order credit. At $5, I'm pretty okay with that. At $50, I would have been pretty annoyed if I paid that much because uh, there's no front coverage. So it's just a back cover. For $50, that's too much. There is, however, an opening on the right side for the power button and the volume rocker, as well as openings at the bottom for the USB Type-C port and the bottom mic. It's only been used for about three weeks, but there are some signs of wear, which I think is okay because I'd rather the case be damaged than the phone. On the front, I am using the included screen protector. I'm also using the included screen protector on the inside. I thought about taking this off and putting on an anti glare screen protector, but I'm going to wait for some other people to do that first. I'm being a little bit careful when it comes to doing anything to the inner screen because of how sort of delicate it is. However, for the front, I am getting the white dome glass screen protector. It is on its way and I am planning on doing a video on that. So if you're interested in my experiences with it, feel free to subscribe and that should be out in a couple of weeks. So here is the lock screen on the cover screen. I will switch to the inner screen in a moment, but I do have Discord and Talon in the bottom corners for quick access. Here is the home screen setup on the outer screen. The setup is exactly the same as the inner screen, thanks to Nova. I am using the Nova launcher. I don't like how the Samsung launcher has independent setups for the inner screen and the cover screen. I like when they are both the same. Plus, I've already been using Nova for a while and I do like its customization options. This layout I've used for smartphones for quite a while. I just have a basic weather widget and a couple rows worth of icons. The first row I have some of the more basic apps such as calculator, calendar, camera, clock, photo gallery, and the Google Play app. The second row is typically reserved for just folders, but because I have more columns, I wanted to add some normal icons to that. So I've got Google Maps as well as Samsung Health. In the first folder, I have some of the other included apps that came with the phone, such as the Samsung Galaxy app, Gear, Google Keep, Samsung Pay, T-Mobile, T-Mobile Tuesdays, T-Mobile Visual Voicemail, as well as the Samsung Voice Memos app. In the social folder, I have Facebook, Instagram, KowKowTalk, Facebook Messenger Lite, Periscope, Steam, Swarm, and Twitter. Next up is a games folder, which I don't typically have either, but using this much larger screen, it has finally gotten me to play mobile games, to the point where I purchased the iPega PG-9083S. The phone fits perfectly in this, everything feels pretty comfortable, the analog sticks work decently well, there is a dead zone, which seems pretty common with these kind of cheaper Android controllers. But given the price, compared to a, P uh, a PlayStation or an Xbox controller, it works fairly well. I am planning on doing a video about this at some point within the next month or so. Um, so if you're interested in my thoughts on this, stay subscribed and that will be out at some point. Um, I did originally try the phone with a traditional console controller with just a mount attached to it, but I would much rather have the controls on the side of the screen. It just felt more comfortable having additional spacing for my hands. And if I'm in bed, I can more easily control how I have the device oriented. I can move it closer to myself without it feeling kind of awkward when using a traditional console controller. So I, I like this Nintendo Switch idea uh, or PlayStation Portable idea a lot better. As far as the games I do currently have, I have Among Us, Carmageddon, Genshin Impact, Ocean Horn, The Octopus button mapping app, Parsec, as well as RetroArch. Uh, this screen ratio is really close to 4x3, so emulators work really well on this. I think the screen brightness just decreased. Let me turn that back up. For RetroArch, I'm currently using it for a couple of PlayStation 1 games, Game Gear, Dreamcast, as well as Game Boy Color. Works very well on this device. In the final folder, we have 1Password, DJI Fly, Golf Shot, the hobby TV show tracking app, Kitty Hawk, My Dean Link, NHL, Private Internet Access, PowerTube, which is my preferred app for downloading YouTube videos, Shazam, Six Flags, Sling, Solid Explorer, Speed Test, Strava, Team Viewer, TV Guide, VLC, and YouTube. In the dock, I have Phone, Kiwi Browser, which is my preferred web browser for Android because it can put the 
The address bar at the bottom of the screen for easy one-handed use. Gosh, the screen looks really disgusting on camera with all those fingerprints. In person, it doesn't look that bad. And when you're using the screen like right now, it's not that bad either. Uh, but Kiwi also has built-in dark mode, ad blocker, works really well. Next up is the Samsung email app, Google Messages, Spotify, Discord, and Talon. Here's what the app drawer looks like for everything that I have installed. That uh, Only a couple of these apps aren't in a folder, such as Duo for multi-factor authentication and some others. For the keyboard, I am using SwiftKey. On the inner screen, it's really large, so I switched to the thumb layout, and it works really well when you're just thumb typing. The inner screen, it's a little bit smaller. You can switch it back to the full screen layout for a better typing experience. I'm using SwiftKey because Samsung's autocorrect is just absolutely awful. It does have the advantage because it'll automatically switch to the split keyboard when you're on the inner screen and the full keyboard when you're on the outer screen, whereas SwiftKey, you have to keep switching between them. Gboard doesn't have a split keyboard, which to me is essential when you're typing on the inner screen. So whenever it gets that feature back, because it used to have it, I'll gladly switch back to Gboard. Fortunately though, SwiftKey's autocorrect is much better than Samsung's, so I will keep it installed for now. I do have a couple of good lock customizations as well. I am using the slim list task changer, which is what you see here. It just is able to fit a lot more apps that you can switch to in the view. Whereas if you used any of the more traditional layouts, it only shows maybe three to four apps at a time. And I don't like that at all. Very happy that Samsung includes that option for their devices, because to me of any phone, that's the best app switcher out there now. I also have Navstar installed, which adds additional buttons to your bar if you'd like. You can also change what the icons look like. All I did was add power in the notification shade shortcut to the bottom. With the power button here, I never actually press the physical power button. I can just double tap the screen to turn on. To turn it off, I can just either double tap, uh, double tap the launcher home screen or just tap on the button in the nav bar. I do like how the fingerprint sensor on the side can stay on, so if the screen is off, just tap your finger there and everything comes back without having to double tap to wake the screen first and then you put your finger on the fingerprint sensor. I think that is about it with this video. If there are any comments, questions, or suggestions about this or anything else, feel free to leave everything down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all in the next one.